We welcome all our guests. We welcome those who have come all the way from the Quebec State to help us assist in this occasion. And we shall also recognize other dignitaries as the event goes on. Thank you. Please kindly find seats and sit down, please. The procession is on. Shall we all rise as a seminarist that in our John Nyka is making his entry into the hall? We also recognize the presence of the Deputy Governor of Akwaiba State, Mr. Moses Eko. Shall we all rise as the procession takes its entry into the hall? The procession is led by the University PR of Ms. Evelyn Odeka. 
In the front row, we have our lecturers, distinguished lecturers. We have seen members of the University Senate comprised of directors, heads of departments, and our most distinguished professors are also on the queue. And of course, the last will be the inaugural lecturer for whom we are all gathered here today. It is the joy of every academic to have himself robed, and not only to have himself robed, but also to be inaugurated as a professor, a full professor. You are highly welcome, deans, directors, heads of departments. We can also cite the Dean of Teams. Okay, the dean standing come forward and take your seats honorably in front. Our dear deans, we have the director of research and linkages taking this honorable seat. And of course, the inaugural lecturer has taken the seat. So at this juncture, as we remain standing, I will invite the university chaplain, Reverend Father Aloy Achonga. Okay. Professor Monsignor Michael Sasa, kindly come forward for the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mighty God and Father, the university community and all our guests are here to give you thanks for the gift of life to see to you. We thank you for the life of our guest lecturer, the inaugural lecturer. Who have not understand to see today. We thank you for the university, the community that was circumcised for the cause of intellectualism. We cannot thank you enough for the many blessings we have received as a community, as a university, even as a country. Difficult as things are hard in our country, we still want to thank you. Father, bless you today. And all we shall become, to each all give you glory, and give our university its desire to complete it. We make a prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now we please remain standing while we take the national anthem and the university anthem. Please remain standing, ladies and gentlemen.
place it down. Now, this juncture, who will take the welcome remark by the Vice Chancellor of Veritas University, Reverend Father Professor Haisi E. Ichoku, who is going to be heavily represented by the deans of the deans of this university, Professor Gabriel Ebe. Professor, please. Your Excellency, Deputy Governor of Five States, Moses Nipu, Your Eminence, John Kadlar Naikon, the immediate past Chancellor of Veritas University, and the Emeritus Archbishop of Abuja, Your Lordship. Most Reverend Dr. Hilary Hashemi, the Bishop of Baochi, Diocese, Distinguished Inaugural Lecturer for the second Inaugural Lecture of Veritas University, Reverend Father Professor Michael Fogobo, Distinguished Deans and Directors members of the Senate of Veritas University in Abuja, distinguished visiting professors who are here with us, heads of departments and units, family and friends of our inaugural lecturer, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I wish to, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of Veritas University, Reverend Father Professor Isaac Ichoku, most respectfully and warmly welcome all of us to the second inaugural lecture of Veritas University. Let me inform that, coincidentally, today is a meeting of the Governing Council of Veritas University. The anticipation was that if by two o'clock the meeting would have been over. But as I speak now, the chairman of council, his lordship, Bishop, uh, the Bishop of Kuka, Bishop of Sukoto, and all council members, and the vice chancellor and principal officers of the university are currently meeting. But in a couple of minutes, they will be done, then they will join us formally. It is also on that note that I want to, on behalf of the management of the university, not only welcome you to Veritas University, for those of you who are coming for the first time, but to say that Veritas is very proud to present its second local lecturer to the world. Inaugural lectures are opportunities for newly inaugurated professors to come to the public and tell the world what they shall be professing in the course of their professorship. And so it is the hallmark of an academic to have the opportunity in the course of your stay in the university that when you are made a professor, you have the public opportunity to publicly pronounce and profess what you will be professing in the course of your academic journey. What that means is that whatever Professor Dogo will say today is like a bishop who is sitting in his cathedral. And whatever he says, 
from that seat is seen to be sacrosanct. So whatever he says today, nobody can hold him accountable and we are questioning that declaration. So he is only going to make these profound statements. And those statements can be used now as a reference point of academic discourse in his chosen area of profession. It is therefore something of honor to present to you our second inaugural series as a young university. I want to assure you that by October, we shall be having the third inaugural lecture, and by November, we shall be having the fourth inaugural lecture, and by early next year, we shall be having the fifth inaugural lecture. So we are already loaded going forward. It is therefore with great honor and excitement that we welcome you to Veritas and we look forward to listening to our lecturer, to feed us, to nourish us, and to entice us with the theological dispositions of his academic journey that has made it possible for him to come to the public, to profess, and to pontificate issues bordering on biblical theology. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to formally call this assembly open for the second inaugural lecture of Veritas University of Utah. Thank you. Finally, put your hands again together for Professor Ebe. He is the chairman of the planning committee of this inaugural lecture and the dean of deans of this university. Now, before we proceed, can I please draw your attention for those of you who will want to use the restroom, the convenience, male this way, female the other way, please, in order to avoid confusion. Now, the next item on our program here is the citation of the inaugural lecturer, which will be done by Father Dr. Peter Bakwapud, the HOD of Education Department. Father Bakwapud. Before the citation, I have the honor and privilege to invite the inaugural lecturer of the day, very reverend father, Professor Michael Ufo, to come to the stage. Your Eminence, Cardinal John Onaikon, Your Excellencies, my Lord Bishops here present, Monsignors, very reverend fathers, reverend fathers, religious and religious sisters here present, Your Excellencies, Mr. Moses Deco, the Deputy Governor of Papaiba State. The Pro Chancellor of the University, Most Reverend Dr. Matthew Hassan Kuka, and members of the Governing Council, the Vice Chancellor, Very Reverend Father Professor Haisen Pichofu, the Principal Officers of the University, distinguished members of the Academia within and outside Memphis University, Abuja, the family members of the Liberal lecturer, honored and invited guests, friends, and colleagues of the Liberal lecturer, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon to all of you. I'm here to present the citation 
Appointed Father Professor Michael Kufo Udolko at the second inaugural lecture of Veritas University Abuja on this day, Thursday, the 18th of August 2022. So, I divinely born to be preached. Some have greatness bestowed upon them, and some achieve greatness through hard work. Our inaugural lecturer today, very Reverend Father Professor Mark Yakufo Kutweko, is a living example and embodiment of greatness achieved by hard work, resilience, and divine providence. He was born on the 12th of September in the late 60s during the Nigerian Biafra Civil War in Ekon Aban, Edda, from Aparapa clan of Oru Hanan local government area of Ivo State, one of the richest oil cities in the country. Father Professor Michael Udo, Ufo Udo, after his primary education for his first school living certificate in 1980, he attended a prestigious Holy Family College, Okoaba, where he obtained his GCE awards in the late 80s. After his secondary education, and with blessings of his father, who initially would have loved to see young Michael study long for medicine, Professor Udoku answered us calling to the priesthood, which had been his long desire as a young boy. He joined the religious order of the Claresha missionaries and went to Novishi for intensive spiritual formation at Heart of Mary's Novishi, Udoku, in Benue State in 1987, and took his first religious vows in 1988. On the feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, after his initial formation in 1988, Professor Markel Udoibo went to the Claritian Institute of Philosophy, Nekere, in Oweri, where he obtained his first degree in philosophy from Rome. In 1991, after his philosophical studies, Professor Markel Udoibo Led by divine providence, he decided to continue information at his own diocese, the Catholic Diocese of Ecuador. And his bishop sent him to the famous Bigan Memorial Seminary in Ubu for his geology studies and formation, where, as a student, he published his first book titled Corruption in Nigerian Culture. Liberating Mission of the Church in 1992, and he obtained his degree in theology in 1995. On the 7th of October 1995, on the feast of the Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Professor Michael Uduako was ordained the Catholic priest of the Diocese of Ekot Ekene. After his priestly ordination, Professor Michael Oduoko was assigned to various administrative, editorial, teaching, and pastoral responsibilities for services and evangelization at his own diocese of Ekon Ekonin. Professor Michael Oduoko was the bishop's secretary, manager, and chaplain of schools and convent communities. He was a coordinator of the Dancer newspaper titled The Peace. He was the formator at St. Anthony of Padua's Ritual Year Seminary, pastor at St. Teresa's Unco and St. Andrew's Unco Edino. He was the secretary to St. Mary's Hospital, Uruapa, for over four years. He was also an associate pastor at St. Bridget, Urua Aban, and worked in many diocesan committees, 
He gave retreats, moderated talks, seminars, facilitated synods, and published works on faith, religion, culture, social justice, including family functions and children education in 1997, and the limits of a divided nation in 1999 as his works. Ladies and gentlemen, this accomplishment were even before the young father, Professor Mark Edwudu Our earlier book inaugural lecturer today was sent on further studies. Professor Uduogo was destined to be a great man for the service of church and the society. In 2003, his academic giant, his academic giant, a moral example, was sent for further studies in Europe, the Middle East, and in the United States of America. While on further studies at graduate and postgraduate levels, Professor Mark Oduogo attended St. John's University, New York, the Catholic University of America, Washington, D.C., Asma Institute, Jerusalem, in Israel, Pontifical University of St. Thomas of Finance, and Luke of Rome, and the Theological Union Foundation, Indiana, for his master's, license, and doctoral degrees in theology and biblical studies and languages. He published his publications are globally celebrated, received, and positively reviewed, especially his influential doctoral dissertation titled Rethinking on the Day of Yahweh and Restoration of Fortune in the Prophet Zephania, an exegetical and theoretical study taken from the book of Zephania. Our distinguished guests, permit me to briefly highlight that Professor Udo's life and contribution so far has been a combination of dynamic scholarship, biblical spirituality, and social pastoral outreach. When he is not in the classroom, or doing research, is preaching in the parish. As a full-time professor, of biblical theology and exegesis, and a renowned biblical scholar worldwide, Professor Odweko has over 60 publications in biblical studies area under this iconic name. He particularly loves and teaches with passion in his area of special interest and specialization, namely the historical and prophetic books of the Hebrew Bible known as Old Testament. He speaks different languages and fully facilitated in biblical languages, including Aramaic, Hebrew, Syriac literature, coin, what is known as biblical Greek. And he has read and participated in several archaeological exploration and study trips to the Holy Land, Israel, Egypt and Jordan, as well as spiritual and pastoral pilgrimages to major holy sites and shrines of Our Lady in Rome, Italy, Fatima in Portugal, Lord in France, Black Madonna in Poland, and Great Bay in the United States. In the United States of America, he worked in the following parishes. St. Francis Cabrini Church, Forum in New York, Church of Good Shepherd, Old Rock in New York, Stony Brook Kitchen Hospital, New York. As an excellent and dedicated scholar and a theologian in the service of church and society, Professor Martin Uduogo, prior to his arrival to Veritas University, Abuja, lectured successfully both within and outside Nigeria, nationally, regionally, and internationally. 
at St. Anthony of Padua Spiritual Seminary, Nko, Secret Heart Seminary and School of Geology, Milwaukee, Wisconsin in the United States, the Gandhi Institute of West Africa, Morocco, and at St. Joseph Major Seminary, Echo de Pene, in Nigeria. And currently at Gregor's University, Abuja, where he is the present dean of the Faculty of Humanities. <laughs> Professor Wakel Udweko taught so many courses in so many institutions that he worked. Numerically, he has written and taught over 10 beautiful courses at Sacred Heart Seminary and School of Theology between 2011 to 2020. He taught nine courses at Catholic Institute of West Africa from 2018 to 2019, and four courses at St. Joseph Seminary, Benet, and about seven biblical courses here in Veritas University, Abuja. Professor Udogo has also supervised several number of projects from undergraduate to postgraduate in Siwa, in Sacred Heart Seminary and School of Geology, and Heritage University, Abuja. May I also mention that Professor Marker Udogo has written three impactful academic thesis, one for his master's and two for his doctoral degree and postdoctoral degree. Notably, ten we are well written books and they have been credited to his name by the publishers both within and outside Nigeria. He has 37 journals, periodicals, articles, reviews, and book chapters that are internationally peer reviewed by many publishers. Professor Mark Edoko also has several works in progress that are yet to be published, and he has attended over 30 conferences nationally and internationally, as well as presented papers in most of these conferences he attended. It may interest us to note that this erudite lecturer and speaker has one coming up in September 2022 in Mauritius, where Professor Oduogo is scheduled as usual to present a paper titled Reading from Africa, the Christian Theology and Christian Anthropocentrism in the Book of Genesis. And that will take place at the Conference of Pan African Conference of Exodus. Peace. Professor Martin Ogo remains a very active member of many professional, biblical, and theological associations, including the Catholic Biblical Association of America, CBA, the Catholic Biblical Association of Nigeria, Kaban, Society of Biblical Literature, and Pan African Conference of Exodus. Professor Michael Odogo has many honors and awards in his name in the area of sports, research, and publications dedicated to him based on good conduct in his diocese and outside the diocese where he works. Notably among his awards are John Paul II Leader Grant Award. He is a recipient of Obon Ifion of Aparapan Clan, awardee of excellence for Aparapan Clan Light Mind in Nigeria, is a recipient of Lily Conference on Theological Research Award that took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in the United States. 
is also a recipient of Association of Theological School, School Conference Award for Faculty in North America, Chicago. He's also a nominee candidate for President Rector of Secret Hearts Seminary and School of Theology, a recipient of Rosenberry Foundation Fellowship Group in Italy, and awardee of Presidential Scholarship at St. John's University, New York. During his studies, he had the opportunity in addition because Professor Mark Odogo is a very knowledgeable and widely traveled scholar. He has took part in the Wadia Trauma Excavation project that took place in Jordan in 2007. In 2010, he was in the Angelicum Burial Fellowship in the Religious Study Trip to Israel. And in 2015, he embarked on the study and excavation trip to Baiseda in Israel. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, wherever our inaugural lecturer today has sat, he served responsibly and with dedication in multiple task force and committees. Why at Sacred Heart Seminary and School of Theology in the United States? He was the coordinator of the Seda Biblical Archaeology to Israel, convener and head of department, structural department, board member formation review board, member of academic advisory board, member of search and venture committee for New Testament professor, member of search and venture committee for ethics professor, mentor and advisor student case study program. He was the director of several thesis, masters and doctoral, a member of library advisory board. Why is Siwa, the Catholic Institute of West Africa, this humble and highly experienced scholar served the region in the following capacity. Member of internal revenue, Member review of Siwa's task as a Catholic university in the light of Escodia Ecclesiastes, which he was the secretary, chairman, mass firm process, member external and internal examiner of doctoral defense of the faculty of canon law, and member of PhD defense panel department of theology. Of course, here in Bentas University, our inaugural lecturer today is the Dean, Faculty of Humanities that comprises five departments. Member of Resort Education Chief, representative of the Vice Chancellor and National University Commission, T for the review of benchmark for assessment for theology. Chairman, Bookshop Advisory Board. Chairman, Pontifical Faculty Committee. Chairman, Review of Standard Guide for Teaching and Learning. Chairman, Audit Compliance of Veritas Health Board. Member, Postgraduate Board Committee. Member, Staff Disciplinary Committee. Member, Veritas Board of Health, Member Curriculum Review Committee, Facilitator Staff Teaching Course Outline, Facilitator Tapping on Principles and Strategies for Effective Teaching Online. His hobbies include playing football, like tennis, reading and writing singing and listening to music, and finally, praying and chatting with friends and with people of goodwill. Your Excellencies, the Vice Chancellor, Deans, Distinguished Academias, Ladies and Gentlemen, I hereby 
present the inaugural lecturer of the day, a very happy and holy priest of God, who wakes up every day and feels as if he was today yesterday. A brilliant scholar, an erudite theologian, prolific writer, a man that is approachable, graceful, meek, soft-spoken, down to earth, spiritual, hardworking, unassuming, disciplined, generous, humble, prayerful, compassionate, pastorally minded, lover of people, in the person of very reverend father, professor, Michael, Ufo, Udoiko, the key, faculty of the humanity, Veritas University, Abuja. Thank you very much, Father Dr. Papa, for that beautiful citation of our inaugural lecturer. Can we please get your attention? Now, I'm sure if you didn't hear anything while the citation was going on, you heard that he is a member of Taban, Catholic Biblical Association. And it brings to mind Jadaban, Pranolapo, Ajoko, Betamina. And we are now going to lecture, lecture now. Professor Udeko is not as old as Jagaban, and I guess that's why he was able to stand through that long speech. At this juncture, we shall go straight to the business of the day, which is the presentation of the lecture of today. Professor Mike, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, the erudite Reverend Gentleman who gave the citation. The MCs. Your Excellencies, Your Eminence, Cardinal John Olaiko, Your Excellencies, uh, Bishop Hilary Dachene, the Bishop of Auchi, a friend and a classmate. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Akwaibo State, Mr. Moses Ingo, a devout Catholic and a friend. The Vice Chancellor, Principal Officers of the University, Chairman and Members of the Council, and the Honorable Senate of Veritas University, distinguished professors from within Veritas and outside Veritas University, Abuja, my Lord Spiritual and Temporal, members of the university community, members of the press, honored and invited guests, friends and colleagues, my beloved family members, especially those of you who were able to make it by night bus from Ecole Equine State, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Many of the better things in my life have happened on the spur of the moment, and I believe always under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and divine providence. One of those better things concerns the discipline of sacred scripture or biblical theology and exegesis, which, with the blessings of my bishops and superiors, I have opted to leave study and teach for so many decades now. When I learned not too long ago, I was to be honored by Great Veritas University Abuja to deliver this second inaugural lecture. My mind on the score of the moment, of course inspired by the Holy Spirit, first went searching for specific texts and pericles in the historical and prophetic section of the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, that have for the most part remained my area of research interest. But on the second thought, and as a dean of a growing faculty of humanities that houses a young department of theology, 
And at the time, when the Congregation for Catholic Education has erected two ecclesiastical faculties of philosophy and theology in Veritas, I was divinely and holistically inspired to broaden my topic to reach biblical studies and the complementarity of theology and other disciplines. My aim in choosing this broad topic as, a, as opposed to specific text is not to offer a detailed account of the Christian faith or present a full outline sketch of biblical theology, exegesis, hermeneutics, and Christian theology only from the inside. Rather, my goal is to offer a basic discussion of some fundamental issues that arise when those in an interdisciplinary university setting like ours try to reflect on what is involved in doing Christian theology and biblical studies in particular. And how biblical studies relate or complement other branches of theology, as well as other disciplines in our university. Or yet still, how these disciplines complement, relate, improve, or emphasize each other's quality. Given that such reflection is mostly incumbent upon theologians and biblical scholars, it is my hope as a Christian Catholic priest and biblical scholar that it will also be of interest to those of you who are good neighbors and friends of theologians and biblical scholars. And I also hope that it will be of interest to those of you who desire to know not only the worthiness of doing theology and biblical studies in our institutions, but also how theologians understand his or her discipline. To achieve this goal, this lecture focuses broadly on four major areas, namely meaning and nature of biblical studies, complementarity within theological specialties and biblical studies, complementarity within theological specialties and other disciplines. And of course, finally, I will highlight the necessity and the worthiness of biblical studies and theology in our Nigerian schools and institutions. And of course, this will be capped up with my little contribution, conclusion, and just a word or two of appreciation. Meaning and nature of biblical studies. An analysis of important terms and concepts such as biblical studies, biblical theology, exegesis, hermeneutics, and theology will actually offer us a solid foundation for our entire conversation this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, the study of biblical Bible and many, many would agree is a rich and rewarding experience that invites students and scholars into conversation with scriptures, the word of God, the soul of theology. As with any other intellectual inquiry, this conversation may begin with a number of legitimate questions, probe more deeply into some topics than others, more freely among variety of interests, and draw on a vast array of skills, informations, and methods of study. In biblical studies, this simply means exploring the different contexts of the Bible, such as 
its rich history and culture, its languages, philology, literary forms, the perspectives of its authors, the arrangements of its writings, and the interpretations of individual passages and books of the Bible. Each of these topics may be studied for its own sake, yielding insights that may illuminate our understanding of the Bible and its world. But it's also true that this context relates in some ways to questions about the theological meaning and message of the Bible, which simply leads us to the question of what is theology? Following Goy Mancini's fundamental theology and Thomas P. Rausch's essays on theology and methods, theology has as its great roots in the words theos and logos. Theology, theos and logos, and logos rooted in Greek. Theology is a reason discourse about God. When it is simply our talk, purely human talk about God, it can be just philosophical, something we find in Aristotle's metaphysics. But originally, there is always God's talk about God as expressed in the prologue of John's Gospel. En arke en hoi logos, kai hoi logos en prostantion, kai theos en hoi logos. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Since God's words expresses not only the infinite intelligibility of God, but also contains the original pattern of every created thing. It already encompasses within itself all true human speech about God, including true philosophical speech about God. As Thomas Aquinas will put it, every truth by whomever it is spoken is from the Holy Spirit. Every truth by whomever it is spoken is from the Holy Spirit. Through this Holy Spirit, God not only speaks to us, but demands our answers and our responses, just as his accomplishment or work of salvation history in us does. Our first answer, according to Mancini, is the prayer of the church in praise and thanksgiving, expressed in the Psalms, in the liturgy, baptism, and in the Holy Eucharist. This is followed by our repetition of God's words in evangelization, catechizing, preaching, and works of charity. Finally, our third response to God's word, variable domini, and work of salvation in us is what we call theology which is words about God's words, spoken to us in Christ Jesus, mediated to us by the church in holy scriptures and tradition and in our own magisterial determination of its contents in dogma. In Mark's gospel, chapter 8, verse 27, during the ministry in the villages surrounding Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked his disciples, Tinamel legusin hoi anthropon inan, who do people say that I am? Christ's disciples are not sure who Jesus was. Finally, Peter, the foremost disciple, replies, You are the Messiah, the Messiah, the Christ. In answering Jesus, the way Peter did in verse 29, Zue hoi Christos, you are the Messiah, you are the Messiah, you are the anointed. Peter, 
who was attempting to bring his own faith in Jesus to expression in, and in language. Peter, in a way, was also making a theological statement. Ladies and gentlemen, granted that theology is a complex subject, partly because it deals with abstract concepts such as faith, justification, redemption, grace, salvation, revelation, eschatology, spirit, and so on. And it contains echoes of the many different voices of religions, schools of thoughts, systems, and concerns. Beneath these voices, theology, or at least Catholic Christian theology, is concerned with our experience of God, particularly our experience of God as a community of faith. Theology is an attempt to understand and interpret the faith experience of a community, to bring it to expression in language and in symbol. Salah Salem explains it as fides querens intellectum. Fides querens intellectum, faith seeking understanding. Theology is not, strictly speaking, religious studies. With its emphasis on faith, theology is slightly different from the fields of religious studies or the history of religions. The latter seek to study religious traditions of faith from the outside as a detached and objective observer, while the former theology seeks to give expression to one's faith from within a particular faith or religious tradition, such as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and so on. The task of theology, if I may mention briefly. In his celebrated work, Faith Seeking Understanding, a good friend of mine, Daniel Miyori, affirms that the task of Christian theology includes providing a clear and comprehensive description of the Christian faith, as well as translating that faith into terms that are intelligible to the wider culture. It is a reflection on the praxis of Christian faith. Theology is faith raising questions. According to Edward Skellibex, familiar to many of us here, yeah, Christian faith causes us to think. It is a thinking faith. Underlying this understanding is the assumption that faith and inquiry are inseparable. Karana, a foremost Catholic theologian of the 20th century, spoke of theology as a scientific and systematic reflection of the church upon its faith. It is the conscious and methodological explanation and explication of the divine revelation received and grabs in faith. It is the science of faith and work of the church and uses different exegetical and hermeneutical methods, some of which I'm going to mention briefly. There are different branches of theology. Permit me to mention them briefly. It includes biblical theology, historical theology, systematic dogma, moral theology, social ethics, pastoral or practical theology, liturgical theology, spirituality, and even canon law. Let me briefly comment on each of these, starting from below. Canon law addresses the code of the church's laws. Liturgical theology is concerned with matters pertaining to the church's official worship. Spirituality is used to describe a particular vision of Christian life and the manner of living it. 
pastoral or practical theology, as Karana explains, is concerned with serving and building up the Christian community through preaching, worship, counseling, religious education, and service. Along with other aligned disciplines, it is focused more on directly on Christian life and practice. Moral theology articulates the values which informs the Christian life and identifies the kind of conduct which is inappropriate to Christian life. Social ethics, if I may add, seeks to apply the gospel message and the social teachings of the church in the areas of social justice that are being sought for in Nigeria, human rights, and international relations. Systematic theology seeks to understand the basic doctrines of the faith and demonstrate how they are related to one another. Historical theology studies the development of the church's faith and theological tradition in different periods of history, such as the early church, as reflected in Acts of the Apostles, the era of the church's fathers, which we call the patristic era, the medieval period, the reformation era, the 19th century, up to the present Vatican II Council. Among all these branches of theology, biblical theology, exegesis, my area of specialization, is always kept as the soul and the mother of theology. Scripture, biblical theology, is the soul and mother of theology. And I'm very sure Cardinal John Onaikon, the scriptural scholar, will agree with me. <laughs> biblical studies. As indicated earlier, the task of biblical studies includes, this is important, exploring the many contexts of the Bible, such as its history and culture, its languages and literary forms, the perspective of its authors, the arrangement of the writings, and the interpretation of an individual passage of the book for its theological and pastoral meaning. Of course, the search for such theological meaning grows out of the actual experience of the people who have used the Bible as a source of authoritative guidance and nature in matters of faith and religious practice. In studying the Bible, its laws, its ethics, its narratives, poetry, wisdom, history, prophecies, and letters, students, exegetes, and teachers naturally ask theological questions in a variety of ways and settings. In studying the Bible, people ask spiritual and theological questions. Hence, the development of the discipline of biblical theology within biblical studies. The development of biblical theology within the broader topic of biblical studies. The question is, what is biblical theology? As a working definition, and in this context of our lectures, biblical theology can be understood simply as that which seeks to identify and understand the Bible's theological messages and themes. That is, what the Bible says about God. What does your Bible say about God? What the Bible says about God? And what the Bible says about God's relationship with creation and humanity. Biblical theology. Details of the historical development of issues concerning the themes 
inherent in biblical theology, honestly, is beyond the scope of this brief lecture, except to agree with a friend of mine called James Mead, that biblical theology shares with all aspects of studies a common interest in biblical texts, while also pressing on to discern what those texts communicate about God. Thus, biblical theology, though it has a relationship with other disciplines, can be distinguished, for example, from the study of the Bible's historical, sociological, anthropological, or literary backgrounds, but it must also be sensitive to and knowledgeable about those backgrounds. In fact, almost any biblical passage of the Old Testament and New Testament can be chosen to demonstrate biblical theology relationship or its complementarity with other aspects of biblical studies and exegesis. For example, those of us who carry our Bibles, in Genesis chapter 22, one might study Abraham's near sacrifice of his son Isaac in order to explore the rhetoric of family and social relationship behind that story. This might also lead us to investigate such practices of child, such as child sacrifice in Asian Near Eastern culture and religions. The intricate use of literary devices within the pericope would be a means of learning about the way the Hebrew narrative function as a literature. These aspects of research do not independently and explicitly have to be theological insofar as their goal may simply be to learn more about the society and literature of Israel in his own historical setting. Similarly, in the New Testament, someone can read the St. Paul's letter to the Galatians along with the questions about books, the book's historical development, literary forms, languages of composition, and religious issues, the work of biblical theology would be to explore how this book of Galatians offers us an insight into St. Paul's understanding of God's work among believers in Galatia. Having said all this, Theological interpretation must be complemented with exegesis and hermeneutics, or other methods one might use to answer them. For example, our Pope Emeritus, Benedict XVI, once said, this is important, where exegesis is not theology, scripture cannot be the soul of theology. And where theology is not essentially the interpretation of the church's scriptures, such as such theology, has no foundation. In other words, the study of scriptures ought to lead us to ought to lead an inc ought also an increased awareness of the mystery of divine revelation and foster in us an attitude of prayerful response to the Lord who speaks in us. Biblical studies is complementary to scriptural prayer. Prayer is not in opposition to biblical exegesis and hermeneutics. What then is exegesis and hermeneutics? In her globally celebrated work, many of us are familiar with here, the revelatory text, Sandra Schneider's once argues that distinguishing these terms, exegesis and hermeneutics, is often unnecessary, as doing so does not dramatically affect the resultant biblical research. But in this context of our lectures, I will briefly, nevertheless, explain the meaning of exegesis and hermeneutics. A good friend of mine, Daryl Bock traces the root of the term 
exegesis to the Greek word exegioma, which means to lead out, to read meaning out of a text. Exegesis is an attempt to explain or interpret a text. It's a product of interpretation through the various uses of artistry and scientific methods that we have seen throughout the ages. Another colleague of mine, Douglas Stouch, observes that an exegesis is a thorough analytical study of biblical passages done so as to arrive at a useful interpretation of the text. Historically, biblical exegesis has been embraced as a process of ascertaining the literal meaning of a text. It is the setting forth of author's text meaning by interaction within original languages through the use of sound hermeneutics with a view to applying the text to the contemporary church and the world. It is an attempt to draw out the meaning of the Bible and apply it to our brothers, to our mothers, to the Sion, to the CMO, and to the CMO in our parishes. There are four points, notably, in this broad definition of the meaning of exegesis. One of them is to find out the author's intended meaning as expressed in the Holy Bible. Exegesis involves diligent work with the original languages of the Bible, as mentioned by the person who gave the citation. Exegesis has to do sound hermeneutical principles. Finally, the ultimate goal of biblical exegesis is to theologically and pastorally apply the text to the listening, living context. Of course, three basic outcomes could be underlined concerning exegesis. Number one is understanding the meaning of the text, articulating why one thinks that is the text message both as a whole and in, in its particular details. And of course, preparing for application rooted in the biblical text. There are various tools of exegesis. And this would include the ancient tools, the Basilotic text, Greek text, concordance, and dictionaries. These are the tools of exegesis. Of course, such careful study, a friend of mine, Box suggests, can deepen one's understanding of theology and the word of God. Not only does the exegete gain an appreciation for what he or, she, or what the text says, but an exegete also gains comprehension of the rules of debates and dialogues that surrounds the text and its details. The careful exegete can articulate what the text means and why he or she can also explain why the text may see it differently. Such are the skills and the artistry of the mature theologian exegetes. However, their goal is incomplete without the proper understanding of hermeneutical discernment of that text. A word or two on what is hermeneutics. Hermeneutics is taken from the Greek word hermeneum, simply meaning to explain. Hermeneum, the verb to explain, interpret, or translate. While the noun hermeneia means interpretation or translation. As Schneider explains, hermeneutics means interpretation that traditional takes three forms, speaking, translating, and explaining. Hermeneutics, teaching, explaining, and of
My teacher, Frank Matera, of the Catholic University of America, was my teacher. Biblical theology explores the English people were being theological interpretation as a great cause to what we get in biblical theology. Matera notes that although others were already engaged in the work of biblical theology, it was a gentleman called Joan Philip Gathers many, many, many years ago in 1787 when he was presenting an elaborate lecture as I am doing today in the faculty of Antidote that separated biblical theology from systematic theology. And since then, the debate went on and on and on. But a good friend of mine, not too long ago, after this lengthy debate, that you have been, you have been in the book that you have, gave her counsel the belief that biblical exegesis and systematic theology, or biblical exegesis, and systematic theologians should work together in a complementary fashion because both fields have unique strengths and emphasis. In other words, there is a need for continuous dialogue and complementarity between biblical exegesis and systematic theology. And there are many other scholars. You have been there in the pocket and have contributed to this event. John P. Reese, Bernard Donegan, Christian Sandor, and Mary Hope. They all agree that even beyond systematic theology, there is a relationship between moral theology, practical theology, and all as enemies, there was one as a enemy. It's so. This is expressed in the and service to others, in prayer and in worship, in music, in architecture, and in art, and in sacred scripture and in living Christian tradition. All these forms of related theological specialties are critical disciplines that we need in our community and in our society. In other words, the unity and the complementarity of these disciplines, as illustrated below, must not be taken for granted. As partners, both disciplines work with scripture and both speak to the world and of the world. Having said this, permit me to mention some modern objection that theology and biblical studies would have faced even in our Nigerian universities 
including Veritas University. Regardless of the beauty of what we have just said about the unity and the complementarity of theological specialties and the relationship between biblical and systematic theology, unfortunately, some people, especially in our country, believe that theology is not marketable. Theology is not economics. Theology for them is an arcane, ancient, mysterious, and otherworldly abstract discipline, which seeks to speak of God in a language far removed from human experiences. Theology seems to be abstract and something that can get lost in the labyrinth of academic trivialities. Some of them say that professors of theology are not well paid in Nigeria, including me. When theology is taught, it is full of words that are at once familiar and very difficult to define. Words that I mentioned earlier, like faith, justification, redemption, grace, salvation, redemption. Even a Swiss theologian that many of us are familiar with, called Karl Barth, made fun of theology. The perception that theology is an abstract subject with little relevance to praxis is what led Karl Barth to humorously recast the prophecies of Amos. He made fun of theology using Amos chapter 5. Listen to what he said, making fun of theology. Karl Barth said, I hate, I despise your lectures and seminars, your wonderful sermons, addresses, and Bible studies. When you display your hermeneutics, your dogmatic, ethical, and pastoral bit of wisdom before one another and before me, I have no pleasure in them. Take away from me your fat books, your heavy dictionaries, your gigantic doctoral dissertation, your theological magazines, your monthlies and quarterlies. Karl Barth's humorous description of theology without practical ethics, that is the point. Theology must be supported with pastoral action. Theology, without practical ethics, wins admiration of another friend of mine, Miyori, who also notices that simple Christian holiness, simple Christian piety has always objected to speculative and useless theology that frivolously asks how many angels can dance on the head of a pin or presumptuously deals with the mystery of God as with a problem in algebra. Theology, you must ask, you must not ask how many angels can take reggae dance on the edge of a pin. Hence, opening the window for the questionableness of theology. In other words, proponents of practical faith, practical theology, pastoral theology, have always charged theology and biblical studies with being a mere intellectual game that causes paralysis rather than leading to action, such as putting food on the table and providing jobs in this part of the world. This humorous prison of theology by Karl Barth served as a constant reminder to all of us theologians, including myself, that we should always match what we preach with action. Exegesis, hermeneutics, theology must be matched with action. By the way, let us not forget the rich and indispensable history of theology. Theology has always been a discipline in the university from the beginning of universities. When students and scholars towards the end of the 12th century began to organize themselves into collective bodies or universities in towns and cities such as Bologna, Paris, and Oxford. As these universities began to grow and to take the place of monastic and cathedral schools, 
they generally included several distinct groups of faculties of scholars in master's and doctoral program, especially theology, philosophy, medicine, and law. Theology and philosophy has always been the root of scholarship since the beginning of the universities. And this traces its root back to the time of Ignatius of Loyola. In fact, they call theology and biblical studies in universities as architectonic wisdom. Architectonic wisdom. Architectonic wisdom. Theology is not only in unity with one another, but with other disciplines. I know this may surprise so many of us who teaches mathematics, teach mathematics, anthropology, physics, chemistry, biology, or whatever you have or nursing in our university. For me, this is very, very important. That should be a take home, that there is a relationship between theology and biblical studies with whatever we do here in our universities. And the reason being that in what you have in the booklet, whether you teach mathematics, anthropology, or sociology, we are all addressing the human problems. And theology, philosophy, English, anthropology are all addressing the human problems. And this is one of the common LCM, the common denominator that underlines all the disciplines here in our university. There's the relationship between theology and philosophy. You have it there in your book. In terms of the relationship between theology and philosophy, um, John Paul II came up with a book or encyclical we are all familiar with, Fides e Ratio, on the relationship between faith and reason. And he describes it as the two wings on which the human spirit rises to contemplations of truth. There is a relationship between theology, philosophy, and anthropology. In other words, faith gives the student of philosophy or philosopher the courage to tackle difficult questions such as the problem of evil and suffering, the personal nature of God, and metaphysical questions like why is there something rather than nothing. There is a relationship between theology, biblical theology, and sociology, anthropology, psychoanalysis, mathematics. Let me give you a classic example of the relationship between theology and anthropology. If you were to read Matthew's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 12, in Greek, I sin kai unokoi hortiness, ek kolias metros, genetes and hutos. Kai I sin unokoi hortiness, you know kistesan, hupoton and tropon. Kai I sin unokoi hortiness, you know kistesan, hey autos diaten basileian ton uranon. That will make no sense to so many of us. But is that text sociologically, culturally, anthropologically were translated into a dialect, or say English. If you heard in English, British English, that we are familiar with, for there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men. That will make more practical sense, cultural, anthropological, and sociological sense than the foreign Greek text that I just read in Greek. In Greek. And that text can be translated into Hausa, into Igbo, into Yoruba, into all our different ethnic group languages in Nigeria. And that is the essence that theology and philosophy must not ignore culture, anthropology, sociology, and different cultures that we come from. Similar experience to be gathered from different texts of the Old Testament. Finally, there is need. Theology, 
is what being offered in our Nigerian universities. I cannot emphasize or overemphasize the worthiness and necessity of offering theological studies in our universities. Particularly since we now recognize that all the academic disciplines, including biblical studies and theology, my area of great passion, through which we're able to make our various contributions are neighbors. We are all brothers and sisters. Christianity, as pointed out by my saying, cited throughout these lectures, that you have it there in a booklet, makes absolute claims about nature and the possibility of human happiness. All human arts and sciences, as discussed, are concerned in one way or the other with the human happiness. Whether you teach mathematics here, chemistry, biology, theology, philosophy, we are all seeking human happiness and how we can live in peace with one another and with God. Theology, which is worth offering in our university, serves all other disciplines in their search for meaning, not only by helping them to investigate how their discoveries will affect individuals and society, but also by bringing perspective and an orientation not contained within their own methodologies. In turn, interact with these other disciplines and their discoveries enriches and complement theology, especially biblical studies, offering it a better understanding of the world today and making theological research more relevant in our society today. Because of its specific importance among the academic disciplines, every university, especially Catholic University all over the world, should have a faculty or at least a chair of theology that promotes biblical studies. Conclusion. Throughout this lecture, and I would like to actually recommend that you have a booklet. Throughout this lecture, I have explained to the best of my ability within the time frame given to me the meaning and the relationship the bling, between biblical studies and theology, exegesis and hermeneutics, and theological specialties. I have also attempted showing how these theological specialties complement, interact, and impact related disciplines in the areas of natural and human sciences chemistry, biology, law, philosophy, mathematics, and physics. These disciplines relate complement, complementary to each other as neighbors. We are all neighbors. We are not enemies. Theological interpretation must be complemented with exegesis and hermeneutics of faith, as well as enculturation hermeneutics that take care of African values without watering down the faith. Where exegesis is not theology, scripture cannot be the soul of theology. To save and to cut time that you have been so patiently waiting, my personal theological and exegetical contributions to knowledge and learning have also been summarily left in Appendix A of the booklet that you have in your hand. I am not going to read them out, but permit me to draw your attention to one of my most recent contributions listed in the last paragraph of your booklet in Appendix A. I have, as mentioned during the citation, won many awards and grants. One of them in the 2022 John Paul II Leaders Grant for Interreligious Dialogue, an initiative of the Russell Berry Foundation, Rome. This grant supported our just concluded project in organizing a maiden national conference in Veritas, 
Be University, Abuja, on interreligious dialogue with the familiar title, Rethinking Interface, a Communical, Cultural, and Religious Dialogue in a Nigerian Pluralistic Context, which took place a few months ago on May 12. That conference, which fielded over 10 speakers, including Kainal Onaikon and many of us here, from all religious spectrum and genders, including Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and African traditional religion, was another of my numerous contributions to knowledge and to encouraging learning and fostering peaceful coexistence in a turbulent Nigeria. We had over 400 participants, both on site and online from global continents. It aligns with the mind of the church, particularly the Vatican II, as expressed in the word of God and interreligious dialogue of the 2010 Veribum Domine and Vatican II's document, Unitatis Reintegratio, on Nostra Etate, that the church considers an essential part of the proclamation of the word to consist in encounter, in dialogue, lay down your arms and your violence, and cooperation with all people of goodwill, particularly with the followers of different traditions of humanity. This is to take place within forms, without forms of syncretism and relativism. This project, that project, serves as a reminder to academicians, to all of us, that the fast pace of globalization makes it possible for people of different cultures and religions to be in closer contact. It provided opportunities to all of us to actively foster Christian reunion, as well as to collaborate with members of other religions and academic disciplines. It presented Veritas University students and staff in particular a unique and rare opportunity to demonstrate how religiosity can foster relationships of national, continental, and universal fraternity. It enables them, it enables us to reconsider the vital place of interreligious dialogue in the face of pluralism of staff, doesn't matter where you come from, pluralism of students, pluralism of the courses we teach, pluralism of the method we use and our methodologies in our academia, in various departments and faculties. It emphasizes that religions must be able to foster a mentality that sees God as the subject of theology, biblical exegesis, and hermeneutics, as the foundation and the bedrock of all scientific learning, natural and human sciences, which are good. God is the inexhaustible source of moral life and the bulwark of profound sense of universal brotherhood and sisterhood. Finally, that conference reminded us that in the Judeo-Christian tradition, one finds a moving witness of God's love for people of all cultures. In the covenant with Noah, he joins them in one great embrace, symbolized in the rainbow, in the cloud, as we read in Genesis 9. And God desires to gather everyone into one universal family irrespective of academic areas or specialization, theology, history, natural sciences, biblical theology, mathematics. We are all brothers and sisters. And this has led to my submission that of which scripture that theology, of which scripture remains the soul along with other studies, especially exegesis, that are truly theological and necessary and worth offering 
in Nigerian universities and institutions. And my prayer is that may the tribes of theological specialties, biblical exegesis and hermeneutics, and other academic disciplines, including natural and human sciences, continue to increase mutually and prosper collaboratively and complementarily in our great Veritas University and beyond. A word of gratitude to all of you. I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> in this critical time of balance, our students are already at home, and the love, the passion, and you are still here. Um, there is this expression that it takes a village. It takes a whole village, not just a family, to raise a child, a baby. And when you look at our faces here, you could see from the cardinal, you could see from his excellency, the deputy governor of Akwai State, you could see the Catholic bishop of Bauchi, his excellency, you could see professors, you could see male, female, sisters, HODs, name them. This is a village, my family members from all walks of life at this critical time, security agents and media. I'm very grateful and thankful to each and every one of you. Of course, God is always our creator. Without God, none of us would have been able to be here. I'm very thankful to God for all that he has done for me and for enabling this day to be what it is. I'm grateful to my bishops and my superiors, my local ordinary, Bishop Kamili Zomo would have been here. He's presiding at a funeral of the CWO or the secretary, the CWO chairperson of the Catholic Diocese of Ikarakwana. He bought the ticket and he would have been here. He had to plead, Michael, Michael, please. Or he calls me Ufok, please. I have to attend to the funeral of this um, woman. So I'm very grateful to Bishop Omo. And I'm also grateful to my daddy, Bishop Kamil Zetubudo, now in Port Accord. He's actually the one that sent me on further studies. He wanted me to do church history. I said, no, 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 my Lord. I like Bible. He said, okay, carry on. <laughs> and I went on to read the scriptures. So I'm very grateful to all my superiors and teachers. My brother, Gabriel, took a night bus. And you can imagine, and my nieces, I have more than 18 nieces. I'm the seed child as cited here of the six siblings. Many of them would have loved to be here, but it is not easy. But my brother Gabriel is here representing our family. I'm very grateful to my teachers and professors cited by Peter. My professors at Heart of Mary's Novitiate, Putong Kong, of which his lordship, Bishop Ila Redachelem, also attended. My professors at the Claration Institute of Philosophy, Uweri. I migrated from Ikora Ekwere to study philosophy in Uweri, Iboland. My professors in Bigard Memorial Seminary, Enugu. My professors in Washington, D.C., in New York, in Israel, and different institutions that I have studied. I'm very grateful to them. And of course, my academic colleagues here, I'm very grateful to you, all the professors, the HODs, and you know I love you so dearly. I would love to mention you by names, but I've been served that my time is up. I'm very grateful to you. I'm very grateful to our amiable Vice Chancellor, very Reverend Professor Hyacin. Ementa Ichoku, he invited me here to Veritas and he has always been behind me as a friend. So I'm very grateful to him and members of the council. I'm very grateful to all my professional colleagues, professional associations that I belong, so many of them cited um, earlier. 
and I want to thank you, my sponsors, and I want to thank you, my benefactors and my benefactresses, the students, the various committees, Professor Gabriel Egbel, he carried his inaugural lecture on his head. So also Peter Bakwa and Felix Oyosoro and other members of that committee, I am very grateful. And it goes back to the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. So thank you, all of you, for coming. Thank you for listening. And thank you. May God bless you. It takes a village to raise a child. Can we please all stand and give him a round of applause? Applause, applause, applause. Well, it's not easy. As you can all see, job of being a professor is not an easy one. May we please all sit. Now at this juncture, we shall go to, we shall rush to the next program on the event, which is the presentation of certificate to the first and second inaugural lecturers. May I crave the indulgence of his eminence, John Cardinal Onaika, to please do that. I invite Professor Egbe, Gabriel Egbe, who is the first inaugural lecturer of this university, to please come forward for his certificate. And I invite Father Professor Michael Udoeko to please come forward to receive his certificate. Thank you, Eminence, for your kind disposition. All right, we shall now go straight into the interlude as you have on your program, and it's going to be a very, very short one. May I now invite Dr. Reverend Father Dr. Amadi, who is the HOD of the Department of Religion and Cultural Studies, to please do the interlude, please. Father Amadi, could you please come? The floor is yours. Your Eminence, my Lord the Bishop, the Vice Chancellor, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, the Professors, the Directors, Heads of Departments, colleagues, my respected 
Uh, visitors, this afternoon, in this short interlude, I have two of our students who are going to help us grace the occasion in order to give highlights of this academic event. So I now invite them to do their presentation. Today, Veritas University Abuja presents The Bible Speaks, a time to listen, a call to action, a poem written to mark the second inaugural lecture of Reverend Father Professor Michael Ufok Uduepo at Veritas University Abuja on 18th August. 2022, 2022 by Father, Father A.I. Amadi CSSP. The Bible, the Word of God, the Word of Life, takes us from Genesis to Revelation, a spiritual roadmap involving no strife, rich in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, an invitation to all desiring hearts, longing for information, formation, and transformation. Indeed, a spiritual, indeed, a divine message displayed with us, a time to listen, a call to action. This holy word, neither as high as the heaven, nor as deep as the sea, needs no international passport, no stressful journey to see. It is near already in your heart to believe, in your mouth to profess, a such light for sinners to confess and live. A time listening, a call to action. The Bible, the unity of two testaments, the old with rich and inspired statement given to the patriarchs in their movement. Father Abraham shouldered God's promises to fulfillment. Moses led the Israelites from Egypt through the desert without torn garments. Eternal dynasty, David acclaims in merriment. Prophet expectation, awaken the coming Messiah. A threshold pavement, a time to listen, a call to action. New Testament, ushering the era of Jesus the Savior, incarnate in the bosom of a lowly handmaid of God's favor. Mary presents to the world its redeemer in splendor. John the Baptist, Herasim's arrival in amiable behavior, preaching and miracle in the love of Jesus, established the kingdom. The apostles continue the, the Continue the work of salvation to freedom. Freedom from sin and power of Satan gaining liberation. A time to listen, a call to action. A renewed voice calls in our time with urgency, insistence, and attesting prime. Its magnitude, exactitude, and plenitude need no decline. A precise, sacred message in its pristine. Jesus loves us and died for us, our good news in line. Born not of flesh, but by God's saving grace we find. Blessed are those who accept him as Lord and Savior divine. A time to listen, a call to action. Ancient and modern voices raised. The same message of love proclaimed. Jesus, the risen Lord, acclaimed. True baptism, member of his body, professed. One faith, one baptism, one God, priest and maintain. Down through the ages, living saints canonized. Here indeed at Veritas, many more emphasize. A time to listen, a call to action. The Bible continues to speak louder and louder. Never in our time to become fainter and fainter. As a collective duty, make it clearer and clearer. Till it becomes one sound, all ears are attuned. Here, yeah, our learned professor Michael Odueko is positioned, a biblical scholar internationally recognized, a theologian, and my faculty to respected. A time to listen, a call to action. The central message, our love to be genuine and unique, express through brotherly and sisterly affection, the stronger protecting the feeble if we seek, Caring and lifting one another in affirmation. No room for the proud, only for the humble in spirit. 
Rejoicing in hope, constant in prayer, we are one in spirit. Indeed, the word of God, the word of life, resounds forever. A time to listen, a call to action, seeking the truth and the glory of God. Bravo, Bravo to Bethesda University. Congratulations to Professor Michael Uduekwo. Peace to our listeners. One more thing. Yes, we are the indigenous here. Presented by Andrew Comfort at Nashing from the Department of Religion and Intercultural Studies. And I am Sabo Silas from Computer Engineering. Thanks for your audience. Thank you, thank you. We did not see the topic, but we are very, very sure that if the Bible speaks, we listen and we put it into action. And that's the summary of what the professor of our second inaugural lecture has said. Today. So thank you very much and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Father Dr. Amadi, the HOD of Religion, Department of Religion and Cultural Studies. Now, this juncture, may I please invite Father Peter Bakwap to give us the vote of thanks. Thank you for your patience. We are getting to the end of this program. Your Eminence, Cardinal John Onaika. Thank you. <laughs> My Lord Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Hilary Gacholam, Your Excellency, Deputy Governor of Aquaibon, Mr. Moses Epo, Distinguished Scholars, Professors, Ladies and Gentlemen, Religious, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of Veritas University, in the person of very Reverend Father Professor Heisen Ichoku, I start to say thank you for coming. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for the good works all of us are offering in the university. And a big congratulation to the inaugural lecturer of the day in the very person of very Reverend Father Professor Michael Ufo Udo Ebo. We thank God as it comes to an end. Immediately after the recession, the reception will take place here. We don't need to go anywhere. Your Eminence, we have a lot to eat and drink. We thank you for the time you have given us. May the good Lord have given you this energy. Continue to see you through, through Christ our Lord. Once again, for those of you who are coming to Veritas for the first time, we begin our admissions on the 19th of September, and our resumption for our first year students will be 7th October. Admission screening will take place here in the multipurpose hall at 10 a.m. in the morning. And our application forms are online and in the admission office, and in the diocese, in education secretary's offices. All diocese and in the office of education secretaries, screening will take place across the country. If you are in Abuja, you can come down to the university. If you are outside Abuja, you can go to your education secretary's office and get our application forms. Once again, thank you for coming. And God bless you all. For further inquiry for admission, you can meet me, Father Bapa, the chairman of admissions. Thank you, and God bless you once again. Thank you, Father Bapa, for the vote of thanks. Now, as part of our announcement, there will be a group photograph immediately after His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Akwaibom State, has spoken. We will have group photographs graph here. Please take note of that. Now may I now invite His Excellency, 
Mr. Moses Frank Epo, MFR, Deputy Governor of Akwai Ibom State, to please give us a word of or two. Your Eminence, my Lord, the Bishop, very Reverend Fathers, Reverend Fathers, Reverend Sisters, the university community, led by the professors and other academicians, the student population, very distinguished in my taste, and friends of Father Michael of Odaipo. I bring you felicitations, appreciations, and gratitude from the people and government of Akwaibom State and from the church, our Catholic Church in Uyo and Ikarekbene Diocese. I bring you greetings from the entire people of Akwaibom State for the honor you've done us through our illustrious son, our distinguished son, who is living out the dream of the Akwaibom Dakada philosophy of perseverance, of excellence, of distinction. I want to thank the university community, particularly the vice chancellors and his collaborators for this wonderful evening of intellectual exposure laced with the word of God. And to say that what you've done today at this famous university, I always think that Catholic institutions, Catholic universities, primary schools, secondary schools, provide the best, the best ground for learning. I am a testimony of that. Our alma mater, the famous Holy Family College, a Catholic institution in the Cuba, gave us all the groundings that we need to propel to the future. I want to thank in a very special way his eminence because I know I'm aware that this university has been his own seed that is so planted and made it possible for us to gather here. Let me assure you that for us in Akwaibom State, we will, through this distinguished professor, Nigerian distinguished professor of Akwaibom State Extraction, support whatever you do here and hope that you will pass on the legacy of this university, the legacy of our church, which is the saving grace for our nation. Thank you for this evening. And thank you, Professor, for doing us proud, for doing the Aquibum State people proud. 
for doing Nigeria proud, for doing your church proud. I pray, and I'm sure the Lord will hear our prayers to sustain you in your sojourn in this university. I wish this university continued God's blessing and growth as I wish Nigeria, a country, a unified nation of people with the fear of the Lord in their minds. God bless Veritas University. God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your kind and beautiful words. Now, at this juncture, I wish to remind, to draw your attention. The experts have informed me that the group photograph will take place at the entrance of the auditorium because the light here will not permit us to do, to take a good photograph here. May I now please call on the Bishop of Bauchi, no, the Bishop of Bauchi Diocese, Most Reverend Dr. Hilary Dachelen, to give us the concluding prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity to ruminate on very wonderful theological item for thought. We thank you for this great university. We thank you for the professors. We thank you also for the cardinal and founding fathers of this university who worked indefatigably for it to be realized and actualized as it is today. We thank you for all collaborators at different levels to make this university attain its proper position. We thank you for the quality knowledge manufactured here and marketed to the world. We pray that your Holy Spirit remain the rallying point and the direction of this university. We ask you, Lord, to bless Professor Odeko, whom we are celebrating today. And through his efforts, may it be replicated in many young ones coming. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. We remain standing while the Cardinal blesses us all. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank go you. In peace. Go in peace. The lecturer lecture is over. Nice. Now we now announce the arrival of Bishop Fuka. We are now the arrival of the chairman of the governing council of this university, Bishop Fuka, and the vice chancellor of the university. We also announce the arrival of Father Sam Jumi. We're not going yet, please. We have to take pictures before we leave. Yeah. From South Daiko, his attention is... Now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a new directive. Okay, we shall be taking the photograph, the group photograph in the hall as against the earlier announcement of, yeah. Your Excellency, we'll take the group photograph. Photograph, please. Amen. 
We are not done yet. We shall take the photograph in the hall here as against the earlier announcement. Thank you. Yeah. We'll just take the photograph here. We are taking the group photograph now, please. All right. I invite His Eminence, my Lord Bishops, His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, the Vice Chancellor of the University, and Professor Egwe. This will be the first set of photographs, please. Yeah. Please, please. All right. Some of you will stay at the back, please. Some of the dons, the academic dons can stay at the back. Now, please, for the reception, it's going to take place inside the hall here. The reception will take place in the hall here. Mother? Chica, please. All right. All right, thank you very much. Now, let me remind you once again that the reception will take place inside the hall here. For those of us who have not had anything to eat, there is rice and stew, very plenty. All right. We will process out and the reception will start immediately. Members of the academic community of Veritas, we shall process out and the reception will start immediately. Can we please make the procession? Procession. All right, the procession is continuing. Okay. 